The basic cornerstone of the Christian faith is that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came into the world to die for our sins, to take the death penalty for us, for our sins, so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Humanity's basic problem is the sin problem. It was our sins that placed us in need of redemption. The sin problem was why we needed a Savior in the first place. God had to be very serious about the consequences of sin in order to send his son to die for the sins of the whole world. 1 John 2.2 2 says, He himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The word prop propitiation means he paid our sin debt in full. Our sin is paid in full if we accept his sacrifice as the payment for our sins. But what is sin? David Herzman here with Eagle's Wings Ministries addressing the topic, what is sin? Simply put, sin is the bad things we do or have done. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, Romans 6.23. But what is sin? The Bible gives us many answers, and sometimes they sound a little bit contradictory if we don't take into account the big picture. A couple verses from 1 John. All unrighteousness is sin. Sin is a transgression of the law. Some say sin is any deviation from the absolute perfection of God. Others say sin is a willful transgression of a known law of God. And the Bible supports that concept. To him that knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. This leads to a conflict. Some people testify that God has saved them from the practice of all sin, but they refrain from calling it sinless perfection. On the other hand, we have people who would uh, think that it's very arrogant to say that you do not sin. And others actually have it in their confession of faith that everybody sins in word, thought, and deed every day. So we have a major conflict, but the real issue is the definition of sin. Some say sin literally means to miss the mark. What is worse, to miss the mark? or to not even aim at the mark in the first place. Certainly, Christ-likeness should be our goal. If we are not aiming at the mark, is it even honest to say we missed the mark? Some say sin means to fall short of the absolute glory of God. Certainly, none of us have the same knowledge and understanding, wisdom, glory, and strength that God has. But does that mean that every motive, thought, action is rooted in sin and has to be rooted in sin? Does the knowledge of right or wrong become a factor in whether or not we are guilty before God? Solomon said, there is, there is not a just man in the whole earth who does good and does not sin, Ecclesiastes 7.20. Then John wrote in 1 John 3.9, whosoever is born of God does not sin, for his seed, God's seed, remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. So these scriptures seem to contradict each other. How do we explain that? On both sides of the issue, we could present other examples of scripture. Many people love to quote, There is none righteous, not even one, found in Psalms and repeated in Romans 3.10. And yet the book of Proverbs states many contrasts between the righteous and the wicked. Lots of different examples. Some have claimed that it is always talking about imputed righteousness. But in these verses, their contrast talks about the thought life, the family life, business life, almost every activity of life, contrasting the righteous with the wicked. So this would tell us that there are people that God refers to as righteous in his word. There is a vast difference between the righteous and the wicked. 
Sometimes it seems that people want to keep claiming there is none righteous as a justification for their own continuous sins. But consider another passage in John, uh, 1 John 3, 7. Let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. So in taking the whole big picture into consideration, when the Bible says there is none righteous, to synchronize that with the rest of the Bible, it has to mean that none of us are righteous on our own, or our own strength, through our own works, our own goodness from within us. But we can be made righteous by the grace of God, by his grace imparted to us. We have the renewing of the mind, total forgiveness for sins. We are new creatures in Christ and sin shall not have dominion over us. Each of us was born with a sinful nature. You don't have to teach a child to be selfish, to steal, or to lie in his own defense, to throw a fit to get what he wants, to turn away in defiance when you try to correct him, to want to have what somebody else has, even to slap or to hurt others. This is what the Bible means by there are none righteous. We are all born with a nature to sin. We are naturally sinful, but there is deliverance available to us through God's grace. We were born with a nature to look out for old number one, to have our own way. That sinful nature led us into willful sin and disobedience to God, rebellion, self-centeredness, pride, acts of sin. So there are two major definitions. Is, is it a sin every time we miss the mark of absolute perfection or fail to achieve the full glory of God? Or does sin mean that we choose to do what we know is wrong or the refusal to do what we know is right? Which of these definitions apply? I heard uh, another teacher, a college professor, recommend this procedure. When reading the New Testament, or either Testament for that matter, when you come to the word sin, pause and ask yourself, in its context, is this talking about a person missing the mark of absolute perfection? Or is it referring to somebody willfully making a choice to disobey God and refusing to do what he knows to be right? Which would apply in this closing passage of scripture from 1 John 3. Little children, let no one deceive you. Or he who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Which definition applies there? I appreciate those of you who watch these videos on a regular basis. I want them to be challenging and yet encouraging to you. Our subscription list has grown to over 120 subscribers. That's not uh, a lot by some standards, but it is significant and I appreciate each one of you. Please pray for the effectiveness of these lessons. Watch them, pray, like, share, subscribe, and comment. I welcome your input. Have a blessed day in your walk with the Lord.